Good morning, everyone. I'm Harold Peacock. I'll be presenting the, the presentation this morning. And I'm just uh, I'll put on the camera so you can see what it look like I'm a real human being. But I'll turn it off because I think uh, you'd rather look at the stuff online rather than me. At least you know what it looks like. I'll turn the video off now and we'll get started. Okay, so look, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, I'll be, uh, well, like I said, my name's Harold Peacock and I'm from IT for Retirees. That's my name and email address down the bottom left. So if you've got any questions, feel free to email me uh, because IT for Retirees, this is an organization that trains IT for retirees. That's all we do. And we're always patient, always happy to help. And I think we don't talk like computer geeks, at least we try not to. So that uh, hopefully makes it easier to get uh, you know, get the, uh, the message across and, and help help people today. Now, today's session is supported by the federal government's Be Connected program for over 55s. You can see that address down the bottom here. Uh, that's, a, that's a really good uh, resource from the federal government. I think probably uh, under-publicised because there's some really good learnings you can do on there. But at the end of today's session, just towards you know, the last minute or so, I'll just show you how to access that and how to sign up for free. Now we are recording this event today and we'll be making that recording and a PDF copy of the PowerPoint available to you. Uh, now everyone is on mute I believe, uh, which means uh, any, any questions it's, it's probably best uh, to ask them via the chat bubble. So if you move your mouse down the bottom of the screen, the chat bubble should come up. Uh, you know, the Q&A bubble. So click on there uh, and ask the questions there. Now I'll try to answer them as we go through uh, or certainly at the end. If I can't get through them all, that's right, we'll answer them afterwards and you'll be able to make that available with the recording and with the, uh, the PDF uh, copy as well. So the agenda today, what we'll be going through. Uh, uh, look, I think there's some available content there. Certainly, yes, it is online shopping. Uh, be using Coles online as an example. But first of all, I do want to you know, share some interesting facts that will help you, I guess, understand uh, you know, how and why online shopping is, is being used. There's also some advantages uh, for online shopping. You know, there's some disadvantages, but there's some advantages too that uh, in certain circumstances, I think, uh, are, are really good. There's also, I'll share today some instant tips how to stay safe, how to make sure you're shopping on the site the right places and those kind of things. It's nothing, I guess, unusual in that if you apply everything I say today to the, a normal physical shopping experience, it's just the same. You're just being aware to apply those same things uh, in in the online world. Now, once we get that through those uh, first, I guess, series of hints and tips, then I'll hop online and actually show you get in, get in, get started, get registered for Coles online uh, and buy a few things and so on. Now, I am using Coles Online as an example. There are you know, a, lo a lot of uh, online shopping you can do and I'll be touching on them, but there's a few common themes that I'll be uh, explaining to you as well. So it is shopping online generally, but using Coles as, a, as an example. At the end, I just will I'll recap what we've gone through. But like I said, I'll also, hopefully we'll have time to answer questions, but also show you that Be Connected uh, website just to quickly uh, get moving on that because that Federal government resource is a is a really good one. But, uh, you know, it's highly recommended. And certainly, uh, uh, I get a lot of it myself. And yes, I am over fifty five. In case you're wondering. So first up, uh, this slide is uses it's using resources or, or a research by Roy Morgan uh, company a couple of years ago, two years ago in fact. So it's a lot out of date, but it shows there's four there's nine million Australians that were buying online two years ago. Now that's gone up a lot in that time, especially in the last uh, seven, eight months uh, with the COVID scenario. In fact, just in April, just after the COVID thing all started, uh, there was a spike, there's a 30% increase in online shopping in Australia in April alone. So you can see there's a lot of people using it, uh, not just through necessity, but I think there's convenience as well. But what you can see on screen there is also the types of things that people are buying that are most popular uh, entertainment leisure fashion food in fact that's everything <laughs> okay people yes are buying houses and cars online as well and holidays and those kind of things in fact everything you can buy online now 
you just need to be confident that you're buying in the right place and you're using things properly. So hopefully that's what we'll be able to share with you today. But yeah, everything is online and it's growing really, really fast. Now, like I said, there are a number of advantages, I think, uh, to, to buying online now. Buying online can never replace the, the social aspect of going shopping with friends or family and but, you know, going around, walking around for a shop and sitting down and having a coffee, a, a tea and cake, it, it can never replace that. You know, there is other advantages that can perhaps uh, you know, compensate uh, for some of that uh, to make the, I guess, give a reason to shop on, on some occasions online. The first one I've got here is convenience because you can shop from anywhere, anytime, as long as you've got an internet connection. Now compare that to a physical shop. Yeah, you've got to wait till they're open to start with. Then you've got to hop in your car and then go over there. Uh, so it's not 24-7. There is a bit of a journey there and back and so on. Uh, but for online shopping, it can be 24-7. If you wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and think, gee, I've got to get those pair of socks, you can actually do it. <laughs> uh, so there is that convenience that aspect. But there's also you can compare prices really, really easily. And that's part of convenience because when you're online, you can go to any shop or all shops simultaneously. You can have the pricing for Coles, Woolworths, 7-Eleven, Aldi, all open at the same time comparing prices uh, across the board. If you tried to do a similar thing uh, physically, you'd be driving all over town all day and you still wouldn't have made a purchase. So, Yes, there's also the convenience of easily being able to compare prices, not only across the same product, but across different products, so different models, different brands, and so on. So you've got that convenience, I guess, research is another way you could explain that, but comparing prices is something that uh, is, very, is very popular. Yes, I just got a question from Lynette, uh, uh, how to avoid delivery costs, return costs. I will, I will refer to that as we go through. So thanks, Lynette. Uh, so just a reminder for people, if you do have a question, Pop it in the in the uh, questions bubble. If you move your mouse to the bottom of the screen, that'll pop up and click on there, and I'll try and answer as we go through. Another advantage of shopping online is variety. In other words, you can look at a wider range of products than perhaps uh, one particular store might stock. So yeah, you can look at other other stores, or maybe direct to the manufacturer. Uh, you can you can look at whatever you want, uh, and all in your own time and at your own home if you want. The fourth point there, reviews. Now, what that means is at the moment, you could ask someone, oh, what's this store like? Or what's this particular shoes like? Do you find them comfortable? You can do that, uh, but you've got to find a friend or, or, or family member uh, that's had the experience. Online, because it's available you know, Australia-wide, globally, often the products or the retailers get reviews, a lot of them, by different people all the time. Uh, and that can be good, bad or different. And the more reviews that are there, the better. If you see a product or a, a retail that is one or two reviews and it's stunningly good, just be aware that may be the retailer reviewing themselves and they're not gonna say anything bad. So the more reviews that you see, uh, the better. Uh, because that's more like you get a good cross-section. So those type of reviews are available online all the time for all sorts of things. Uh, and again, it's just like asking a friend what they think about it. Uh, but in this case, you've actually got opinions of people worldwide, potentially worldwide, uh, providing information. Now the discount email notifications. I love that one because anyone knows me, I love a discount. Uh, and that's something that most stores do you know, you can register for their email notifications when up for sales and so on. Uh, Aldi, I think, even allows uh, for you to register to be alert when a particular product goes on sale or is in their middle aisle. So there's a number of different sites that allow that. Uh, Coles, I know, have that. I'll show you where to tick that box uh, in the Coles Online. Uh, but there is, uh, yeah, there's benefits to being told when discounts are happening. Otherwise, you're going back to the same shop over and over again waiting for it to be on sale or simply buy full price and then get disappointed the very next day when you see it goes on sale. Uh, you can certainly uh, take advantage of notifications there as well. Now that second last point there, no buying pressure. I think that's a really important one. 
because there's a couple of reasons. If you're in a shop, you could have a salesperson person breathing down your neck saying, come on, it's, it looks great, buy it, buy it, or words to that effect. And it's just, you feel stressed and it's, it's not as enjoyable as it should be. Or you could even be applying pressure to yourself because you might have family with you when you're shopping and you just feel, oh, I'm taking too long to decide, I can't decide. Well, you should never feel bad about that anyway, take as long as you want. But when you're shopping online, you're in your own home, you can take as long as you want, look at as many different sites or different versions, you know, compare prices as long as you want. There's no one there trying to pressure you. Uh, you can, you know, there's no buy pressure. All. Now, just a word of warning, some of the online stores do try and pressure you into a sale by having a clock ticking. Anyone seen that? A clock ticking next to the price saying this price is available for the next five minutes, four minutes, three minutes, or they might saying there's only three products left, two products left, one product left. Well, that's not, one, that's not always the case. And secondly, just ignore it because that's just an automated thing that's online. No one's going to come and, uh, uh, you know, and, and verbally press you or think anything different of you. They just take your time. There generally is no pressure. And the last item there, advantage for shopping online, is it's more COVID safe than going to a crowded shop. Now, that sounds obvious, uh, but it is. That's why, since, especially since uh, March and April, there's been such a huge increase in online shopping by everyone because it does have that uh, health benefit. Yeah, you can take... Uh, you know, take measures obviously for social distancing and they're always cleaning your hands and the hand wipes, that kind of stuff, which is very important because we still need to go out on occasion. But when you're not going out or you don't have to, or you want to shop online for whatever reason, uh, you do have that added benefit of you. It is you know, a healthy environment in that regard. Something people do ask me is, you know, is it safe to use your credit card or should I use a debit card? You know, people used to use a debit card, which means that it only has a certain amount of money loaded up on it, or oh, they're worried about their credit card. Well, look, my, my, my opinion is there's, there's a couple of things there, is that, uh, first of all, uh, yes, Rhonda just put in a comment, another advantage of online shopping is you don't have to carry anything. Yes, hallelujah, because I'm the one that always gets to have to carry everything at a shop. So I'm with you, Rhonda. That's, that's a very good point. It is a, a lot easier and it is delivered to your door. In fact, things used to be get delivered to your kitchen bench, but just with COVID, that doesn't happen anymore. It is to your door, but yeah, you don't have to carry it back to the car, then out of the car and into the front door. So it's a very good point, Rhonda. Thank you. But using credit cards, I do recommend use a credit card instead of a debit card for a couple of reasons. One, they're the safest way to pay online, and that's because there's extra protection and it's easy to get your money back should anything go wrong. Now, if you think about it, a credit card, you know, the, the bank pays the retailer. You don't pay the bank for, what, 30 days, 45 days afterwards. So if anything go wrong, the bank is very happy to get the money back. Uh, so that's got no problems. It's actually a short-term loan by the bank, which, which is interest-free if you pay on time. Uh, so credit cards do provide that, that uh, ease of mind, or peace of mind, uh, should, should anything go wrong. It's also a full record of the purchases. In other words, you can check your, it's very easy to check your statements to make sure what you bought is actually what's what's hit your account. Now compare a credit card to a debit card. A debit card is actually an instant transfer of cash. So if something goes wrong and you want to get your money back, well, the, the bank might or might not help you. It's not, they don't actually care because it's not their money, it's your money that's gone. It's actually out of pocket. Whereas a credit card, you're not out of pocket for a month and a half, if that makes sense. So credit cards, that actually level of security with the bank. Now, in that middle point there, PayPal. Anyone have a PayPal account? Uh, well, I certainly do. And that's why I've got it here because I use what I do. I actually register my credit card with my PayPal account. I've set up a PayPal account, it's online. We, you know, we can help you, it for retirees with that if you like, or you've got friends or family that can help you. But what PayPal is, it's an extra level of security between your credit card and the retailer, the, the, the seller. Uh, because what happens, we, well, you can either put money into your PayPal account and pay that way, or what I've done typically is register my credit card with my PayPal account and pay that way. 
Now, because PayPal is an intermediary, when they pay uh, the retailer, which the bank does with your credit card, they actually never pass over any financial information about you. They're passing over their financial information. Uh, and again, if anything goes wrong, PayPal, in my experience, has been very good at cancelling purchase orders uh, and lose money, money, just like banks are uh, tra from their perspective. So that they get cancelled uh, straight away as well. Now, again, I don't work for PayPal. I don't work for anyone here except uh, IT for retirees. So this, this is just from my, pers my personal use and experience. I'd recommend that PayPal account with your credit card. I think it's the safest way to go but again it's totally up to you but that's uh that's, uh, that's certainly a hint and tip from me now something you do need to really look out for yourself is where you shop just like if you're walking around town and you see down this little dark alley there's this shop down the end there and with a flickering light and it's getting late you know it's midnight you can should i go down that dark alley and shop down there on my own well, it's just like you got to you got to weigh up the risks. <laughs> if you're shopping online, you got to look for the warning signs uh, of the of the sites that you're visiting. Now, I'll put a couple of screenshots here to give you give some hints there. Now, the top left hand one up here. First of all, there's that little padlock on the left. Now, you'll see that uh, on a number of sites. You often see the government sites, banking sites, and so on. That padlock, a locked padlock. That means it's secure. It has encryption in place for the for that site, so you can shop with a bit more confidence on that site. The other thing is when you click on the address in the browser, the, the uh, website address at the top, HTTP will come up. It'll also have an S there uh, if it's got that uh, security certificate also attached. So that's uh, S means additional uh, security because it's got. Uh, encryption in place anything you enter on that site is encrypted uh, in other words it, it's it's harder for uh, people or, or bots robots to come and just scrape the data off and, and use it the way they shouldn't so look for that padlock by the uh, website address and https the s is the important part look for that there now the bottom right hand corner uh, is a screenshot down here because i've also i also run uh, you know antivirus software uh, and, and malware and, and so on, software on my devices. And hopefully everyone does too. I'll be going to that in a moment. But they can, what some systems do, they can actually check the website address when you search in Google or any, any browser and websites come up for you to click on, it'll actually check which ones have that security certificate and have that encryption in place. And they'll give a tick if they do, a cross if they don't. So again, it's just helping you make up your mind or what shop to walk into. It's a dodgy looking one uh, that's dark and it's got strange people and they lock the door behind you. Well, maybe you shouldn't shop there. Uh, if it's a well-known brand, uh, it's got their full address. So you can see their website address before you even log in, check that out. Then, okay, I can, I can maybe go there a bit more confidently uh, and shop. Does that make sense? Just look for the padlock and the HTTPS, and if you've got antivirus software, uh, trust that or, or rely on that uh, to, just to be a bit more confident. Now, again, one an, another thing is just to help yourself. Just know, be aware of who you're buying from. Now, I guess we all prefer, you know, Australian suppliers or, or manufacturers. It can't always be the case. Sometimes you are overseas, but just be aware of the challenges uh, between Australian and overseas sellers or retailers. Uh, because while overseas retailers do need to comply with Australian consumer law, it's not always easy to ensure that's enforced. Uh, certainly all Australian com uh, com retailers do comply or must comply, and that can be enforced with, with the Australian laws, but overseas uh, not so much. In fact, this gets back to uh, the, the question we had uh, about um, yeah, just, just checking about delivery fees and refunds and that kind of stuff uh, because uh, that, that is important to consider uh, when you're looking at who we're buying off uh, and, and, and that can be things check have they got a physical address do they have a, a street address 
Do they even have a phone number, or email, or even a name of a company that owns uh, the, the site? All that information should be down the bottom of the page of the website if it exists. There should also be you know, a privacy statement there. That's the Australian law. If they don't have that, they're not complying with Australian law. Uh, you know, what are they going to do with your data? Uh, that type of thing needs to be there for you to be confident. So look for the address, look at the phone number, email, who owns it, privacy statement, and so on. Then also, while you're down there, look at the terms and conditions. Uh, in other words, like that question there about returns policy, or you know what what the uh, what the cost of delivery is. You know, so, you know if the price is too good, uh, it, it's too good to be true. So just just be aware of that. But also look for delivery costs. If you're happy with the delivery costs, that's fine. But just be aware of it. Uh, and if you're not happy with it, well, don't buy it. But also look for those terms and conditions and returns policy, because if it is an overseas buyer and you want to return it and pay for the overseas postage to return it, suddenly what you thought was a bargain starts to become pretty expensive. So yeah, check the returns policy, check are they reliable that they're actually going to adhere to that uh, and make up your mind in that regard. Now one thing there in the middle of the reviews, just like you can check out different shops and products and see what the reviews are, what people are saying. Oh, gee, the reviews about different shops, that's important too. Uh, the more reviews, the better. Uh, just be aware if you're looking, and I, you know, I've seen examples of this, unfortunately, you see uh, overseas uh, retailers or maybe overseas retailers that set up a store in Australia using an Australian domain name, well, what part of me, uh, it's .com.au, so it looks like it's in Australia, but it's an overseas retailer uh, and they don't abide by the law and it's just the reviews on delivery are, can be pretty shocking, appalling. Look for those if it is just, yeah, there's a, if it's cheap, the product, there's probably a reason. Uh, so just be aware, be aware there's scams, but just be aware who you're buying from. Now, one last tip I want to give you is about not just you make the decision of being where you buy, but also stay safe. Keep your device secure. Now, by device, I mean yeah, your mobile phone, your smartphone, your tablet, your laptop your computer, whatever it is you're using to shop, buy online, or use to go online at all. Use antivirus software. I really recommend it. Now, when you're looking for antivirus software, stick with the big names. Uh, Fringe Dweller that you know, has one customer in Kazakhstan, maybe not the way to go. So <laughs> look for the big, I'm a fan of Kazakhstan by the way, but uh, just look for the big names, things like McAfee and Norton's. Trend Micro. I use Trend Micro, but they're all the same. Uh, just stick with the big names. You do have to pay, but I'm comfortable paying if if I if I get a degree of confidence that that works for me. I've also got on that screen there Windows Defender. Now with people with uh, Windows machines, if you've got the latest operating system, you can actually turn that on for free. It comes with it for free from Microsoft, but you do have to actually turn it on. Uh, so it, it's not turned on by default. So if you want to use that one, uh, you've got access to it, you can certainly turn that on uh, as well. That, that, that's, the, I guess, the equivalent of Trend Micro, Norton's, McAfee. They're the specialists. That's all they do. Uh, that's why I prefer that, but it, it's totally up to you. But certainly run some antivirus software. Now, for those using uh, Apple, you know, an, a Mac, uh, the antivirus software is not as important because the operating systems actually do turn that on. Uh, in other words, keep your software for Apple up to date. Uh, now, if, now for those that are running uh, uh, antivirus software, you, if you've got an older machine, an older phone or tablet or computer, you may find it just slows the machine down a little bit at the start when it does the scan. Now, it, that's because it's an old machine. It, uh, and it's just like if you if you keep loading me up with parcels after parcels after parcels while we're walking around the shop, I will slow down as well. Same thing with a computer. If you keep loading up more and more software on it, uh, and as the machine gets older, it's going to get slower and slower. No different. Uh, so just be aware of that. And when I say older machine, it's sort of like over five years. If it's more than five years old, it's probably starting to get a little bit long in the world of technology. Uh, but if you've got a, a new machine, you won't make any difference. You won't see any difference. Now, whether it's new or old machine, on the right-hand side, 
is please keep your operating system and your browsers up to date. It's just like with viruses, with the flu injections, right? You don't want to catch a virus and neither does your machine. And when you're getting a flu injection, you get the latest flu vaccine. You don't get last year's, you get this year's because that's going to be the most effective right now. Same thing with this software, with your Windows software, with uh, whatever operating system on your phone, whatever. Please keep it up to date uh, because it's in their interest to, to keep you safe uh, because you'll keep using their systems more and more. Similarly, it's in your interest to accept their updates because it'll, it's just, they're always updating to keep you safe. Now, I've got pictures here of Chrome, if anyone's uh, using Chrome. Uh, or um, Safari on your phone, um, yeah, you, you, or even Firefox uh, web, bra web browsers. They're all web browsers. Keep them up to date. Now, the one on the right, does anyone have that, that E with a blue, the blue E? Anyone have that on the computer? Yeah, that's the uh, icon for Microsoft Internet Explorer. Now, if you've still got that one, it's actually out of date. It hasn't been supported by Microsoft for a little while now. So you should be updating uh, to Microsoft Edge. That's their new uh, Explorer. And it's sort of like an E, it's like a blue and green swirl. Uh, but again, just please keep the latest software that'll keep you safe when you're shopping and give you more confidence. Righto. Now, let's, let's go shopping. Now, for anyone that's used Coles Online, this is this is the website. When you go to, you can Google search uh, for Coles Online, Coles Shopping. This will be the first thing that comes up. Uh, click on the link and it'll take you, or you can type in coles.com.au forward slash shop. It'll take to this. In fact, the address it'll go to is um, link shop.coles.com.au. Uh, but th this is the Apple website now. I'm just using Coles as an example, uh, but uh, it, it, is a, it is a common one, a popular one. And because you're at Stocklands, if you register for Benefits Plus uh, for Stockland, uh, you, and then sign up with uh, Coles online through the, and enter the, the code that uh, Stockland provide, you can actually get free delivery. So we had a question before, how do we avoid delivery fees? Well, some of them provide free ones and uh, Coles do charge for the delivery. However, as as, as you are a member or a resident of a Stockland village, you can get free deliveries as long as your order is over fifty dollars and you choose delivery on a Thursday. Now, don't try and get uh, an order in Wednesday night and expecting the delivery very next Thursday because there's been a lot more people shopping online because of COVID. Uh, plus, a lot more people in Stockland villages. I want to take advantage of, of the free delivery. Gee, why wouldn't you? I would. So typically it might be a week in advance that you need to get your order in, or certainly a few days. Uh, but yes, you can get free delivery from Coles when you sign up to the, be a member of the Stockland uh, Benefits Plus program. Any questions about that, I can certainly help or just speak to your village manager. But when you go to Coles Online or any retailer, you do need to set up an account with them to start shopping. So whatever you look for, there's always a, a login or sign up button somewhere on the side. Typically it's top right or down the right hand side. That's the general design for online shopping. Uh, in this case, Coles, uh, I'll give you a hint. Anyone see that? <laughs> yes, there's the uh, sign up button on that black ribbon at the Coles website down the right hand side. So that's where you click and need to register for the very first time. Now I'll, I will show you this live. I'm just gonna show you, go through a couple of slides just to help you get prepared with the information. Because when you click on that uh, login to register, it will ask for a, you know, a certain amount of information. Uh, so I always recommend to just make sure it's not stressful for you and you're prepared and, and it, it goes through well. When you click on that, It'll come to this, but if you have the answers written down before you try to register, it'll just make it a lot, lot easier for you and more enjoyable. So when you click on that uh, sign up icon on, on the right, on that black, this is what comes up. 
and ask a number of questions. In this case, you can see it asks for your name. Uh, it'll ask for your date of birth. Now, why Coles need to know your date of birth, I don't know. But all retailers ask for that. There's a couple of reasons. One, if you ever need to reset your password, so say you forget your password, they might ask for your date of birth just to verify you are the real person. I don't think you need to give me a date of birth. You need to give them a date. Uh, and it's certainly the other reason why retailers want your date of birth, so that they know how to market to you. In other words, in, in our case, we're over 55. They're going to be advertising to us uh, age-appropriate material. Now, they're not going to be sending 16-year-old dresses to me, right? They know I'm male and they know I'm an old bloke. <laughs> so uh, that's why they want this information is, is for marketing purposes. But it is optional. My recommendation is don't put in your real date of birth, but put in a date that you'll remember in case you ever need to use it. But uh, they don't need your date of birth. Uh, so keep that confidential. That's, that's totally, totally yours. You will need to have your email address ready to go. So write down, obviously, your name, a date you're going to put in, and your email address. Have that written down ready. You will need to have a password ready. Uh, you can see that asks for eight characters uh, or more and at least one number. Uh, so have that eight characters and one number ready to go. Uh, and if you've got it written down, so you won't be stressed making one up. But also, you should write it down anyway. Because if you're like me, you have hundreds of passwords. And I can't remember them all. So I've actually got them written down, but I keep them safe. Just like I keep my money safe. I keep my passport safe. I keep my driver's license safe. Uh, same with passport, passwords. You can't remember them all. So write them down, but just really look after them. You can see down the bottom there, there's also a little tick box. Keep me up to date on special offers, products and promotions and news. Now, that means you're going to get an email from them. Might be weekly, might be monthly. You know, it's different on each store. Now, I tick it because I do like to know when the discounts are on. You can tick it if you want, or you can untick it. It's totally up to you, but that's that's where you do it. Now, remember also, when you're in Coles online, you can also enter your flybys number. So, uh, again, I like freebies, so I build up my points. So, you enter your uh, flybys. That way, you can elect those points, whether you're buying in person or you're buying online. Just right now, before we get, I'm just going to go and actually show you uh, the website, uh, the, the Coles Online website, and show you how to register and start using it. So this is the Coles Online website, which I just showed you a screenshot of. You'd recognise the black ribbon down the right-hand side. Now they do. There are videos and things that can help you if you haven't used it before. You just need to scroll down and have a look at that. Uh, and get started. They'll, they'll help you because they want to make it as easy as possible. You shopping online, there's a little two minute video that they'll tell you how to do it and the steps there. Uh, what I'll show you, I'll just give you some little hints and tips as we go through. So the first thing you want to do, you need to sign up. And like I say, look for the sign up button. I'll, I'll click on that. You can see I've already signed up, so it remembers who I am and I'm ready to go. But what you'll get is sign up instead. You'll get this, what, this, what I've just showed you. You put in your name, uh, a date of birth or a date, your email, and having that password. Now, like I said, I've already, already entered it, so it's there. Now, just a little tip. When you're entering your password, You'll need to remember it, and so therefore you'll need to get it right, what you pass, what you type in. Now, if you're like me, I have fat fingers. So sometimes when I'm punching the keys or pushing the keys on my keyboard, I sometimes push the wrong key or push two keys at the same time, that kind of thing. So, so that you can see what you're actually pushing, just touch on that little eyeball on the right. And I won't do it now because you'll see my secret password and we'll have to... Oh, I'll have to change it so you can't do all the shopping for me. But if you click on that eyeball to the right, that will show you what you're actually typing. That way, if you have a typo, you, know, you accidentally click two screens, you, you'll be able to see it. And you'll get that on most websites. Whenever you're entering a password, it'll have that. So keep an eye out of either an eyeball icon next to it or it might be something like show, you know, show letters, show password, something like that. 
I do recommend that, especially when you're setting it up, so then you set it up correctly. There's that little button. If you don't want to be kept the kept the perform up to date about offers, untick it or tick it. It's up to you. Now when you go continue and when you go to the next step, it'll actually ask for uh, your mobile number as well. So have that written down, ready to go. I do recommend putting in the your mobile number because that means if there's ever an issue with your account, they'll call you or you can call them and they've got your information if, if you need to go back and forth. So once you've set up your account, then next time you come to Coles Online, it's just a matter of clicking on login and then entering your username or email and password and login. And I just clicked on that and now it's logging me in. And sometimes there's a problem with internet connection. It's all right. Try again. And we'll log in. And you know you're logged in because, well, I'll just continue shopping. They always put some advertising up the front. And just like on all internet pages, there's a cross at the top right. You can close it there or continue shopping. But there, there'll be advertising. So expect that when you first go into most the shopping sites. They want to get uh, things front and center for you. Just like when you walk into a physical shop, there'll be signs up. There'll be products trying to tempt you to buy on the way in. Same thing up there. So you know you're logged in because you'll be able to see your name there. Uh, some sites have Hi Harold or Welcome Harold at the top right, uh, or in this case on the on the right hand ribbon, it's got my name there. And in there, if you've, you know, you can change your things, you can put in your flybys number. Uh, now that's not my real date of birth, so don't go sending me, I am older than that by the way. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, yeah, you can manage, you can manage your details here. Uh, in fact, I'll show you my addresses because I've got what I did that's not my home address. I actually set up uh, a delivery address for my son because when he moved out, uh, he was working up in Emerald for a while and I was wanting to make sure he was eating eating well. So I was getting fresh food and veggies delivered to him uh, on, on, a, on a regular basis. And so I just was shopping online and, and getting that done that way. So online shopping can be for you, but it can also be uh, for family members as well. In fact, family members can set up their own account and be buying you food. <laughs> which is what I would be encouraging of my children. But anyway, you can also on the right hand side, uh, just whenever you like when you walk into Coles or Woolies, you grab a trolley or a basket. Top right hand corner, that's your trolley, just the same as a physical trolley. And at checkout, just the same as a physical shop. Now all online shops will have a trolley and checkout. And when you want to finish buying, you look for the checkout in a real shop on a website you look for checkout that means you're going to go and finish the purchase and you're actually going to buy the pro buy the products so that's what's common across a lot of the shops now if you ever get stuck and need help coles are actually pretty good now, they have the online help now you can scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page they've got information there when they'll help you got the hours they can help you you see weekdays till one o'clock in the morning 6 a.m. to 1 a.m. because they know people shop uh, you know, online before and after work or anytime. I see they've also got their, uh, their phone numbers there. However, I'll just go back to the top just to look at a familiar page for you. But on the ribbon on the right, you've got health and support. Click on that uh, and you've got their text. And if you want to text on the mobile, you've got the phone number and you've got those times and email them and so on. Now that's what I mean. And they've got terms and conditions and all that kind of stuff there as, as well. The, the privacy policy that I, that I mentioned, which is law. Now that's what I mean when you're looking at shops, just look for those telltale signs. Do they provide address, contact numbers, that type of thing, so that you can be more confident. Coles deliver that, provide the whole lot, which is, which is good. So let's go shopping. And browse shopping is a big hit. <laughs> click, click up there because we've signed up. Now we can start going around the shop and looking for what we want. Now, the first thing that comes up is what Coles wants us to see. In other words, the products that they're really pushing, they're pushing Halloween stuff because it's almost October 31st. I'm not a Halloween kind of guy, but you know, obviously some people are. Uh, so it comes through with maybe specials, that kind of stuff that they're, they're trying to sell. 
But what I like, there's a number of things. One, when you go into a shop, you go to the aisle, you'll go to the fruit, you know, fruit and veggie section, you go to the delicatessen, you go to the pantry, you go to the frozen food section. Down the left-hand side, there are all the categories. So these are all the aisles for you down the left-hand side. They even tell you how many products they have there. Like, I mean, it's October and they've, they've already signed, lining up for Christmas with 123 things in there. Uh, so now scroll down and look at more of those aisles that you can see it's just like in a shop. You want a pet, you want electric, electrical things, household things, international foods, uh, you know, drinks, you can get your water, cordial, fruit juice and so on, frozen food. Just the same as a physical shop. Other websites will be the same. They'll organize it you know, because they want to make it as easy as possible. So if you want to click on any of those, let's see what they got in the bakery today. It'll come up uh, with what they've got. And typically there might be uh, some uh, flybys bonuses or discounts or whatever you want and you can scroll through and look at that alternatively you see at the top search for product now websites are pretty common at the top typically it's the top or top right they have a, a search panel it'll have probably search in it and it probably even has a little magnifying glass that's fairly common as well so just type in a word it might be eggs and it'll give you a list of things eggs so you can go through the aisles down the left hand side or you can just skip the aisle and search what you're looking for now geez i'm not even going to go to easter eggs because it's october surely they don't have easter eggs there but let's have free range eggs because i i always buy free range i'm happy to pay the extra few cents let's see what they got okay that's what they got now where's that free range i like extra large eggs free range these are the ones i these are the ones i get by the way i really do uh so i'm, I'm I'm happy to click that and I'll just remove it. Now, if I click that, did you notice what happened in my trolley at the top right? It shows I've got one item in my trolley and so far I've, I've got $4.50 in there. Now, a couple of reasons that's important. One, a lot of people want you know have a budget they, they shop to each week anyway. So often you see people with a calculator and a pen and paper, you, you might do that and keep track of where they're up to. Also, when you're shopping online for Coles and you want that Thursday delivery for free, you know you need $50 worth, but you don't want to spend much more than that. So keep an eye up here because you see how much you have spent and how many items are there. Now, whenever you choose something, it says, you know, add one of those, or one of these. Now, I actually want two dozen uh, of these because um, yeah, I'm making a stack of those egg sandwiches that everyone loves. So I'm getting two dozen. So that drop down list on the right, click on that. You get the list, you can choose however many you want. I'll change that to two dozen. I've now got two for $9. And look at the uh, my trolley at the right, that's updated. Yeah, that's all very good. But again, if people know me, they know I like the specials. So guess what? You can just go straight to the specials. Now, because I'm already in this part, this aisle of the shop, if I click specials, it's only gonna give me what's in this particular uh, dairy egg section uh, what's on special now I'll go home now don't worry about getting lost in an online store you can get lost in coals or these really easily because <laughs> they're changing the aisle all the time but you can't get lost when you're shopping online because there's always a home button typically it's top left click on home that little shape of home you click on that or websites everywhere they have their logo at the top left click on that both those options will take you right back to the start. So if you ever get lost, just go back here. You've still got your trolley there. You haven't lost your trolley that's come with you, but you're back to the start of the website. Now you can go back into uh, and browse the shops and click on everything. And it'll give you the aisles down the left. But if you just want to look at the specials, you click on specials. And it'll give you all the specials. Uh, in the store at the moment, which again, I love. Now you can scroll through and look at all the specials. But I actually want to look at specials in the bakery section. So I've got specials highlighted there and I'll click bakery. Now I'm in the bakery section and I'm only looking at the specials and I love my Simon's wraps. <laughs> and guess what? There's two for $4. Actually, that's, that's pretty good. Now. Oh, there you go. They're sold out. I bought this yesterday. I did the same presentation yesterday and I bought some. Clearly, I advertise them too much. <laughs> I don't advertise, but that's all right. 
at least it says, look, they're actually out. So at least they tell you, they just don't sell it and then not deliver, right? So that's actually a good thing. But look, I'm happy with these seed wraps there. I don't need the premium white. These ones over here are good. And they're two for $4 as well. So I'll select that as well. In fact, with all those eggs that I'm getting, I've already got lettuce and that kind of stuff. I'm just stocking up on those two dozen eggs. Uh, and I want to get, uh, I want to get these, these wraps. Uh, I'll select that. And it gives me the option. Look, I'm going to actually, oh, I'm going to get, uh, I need 10 of them because there's four in each. That's like a 40 people. I've got 20 people can only get two each. Yep, that's what I want. So I'm just getting 10 and it's added $20. And I've made my selection. If you want to change that, that's all right. That drop down list you can change it. In fact, you, or you can get rid of it entirely. That's totally up to you. But I'm happy with 10. That's uh, two each for the uh, uh, 20 people I've got coming. All, and they're all getting eggs, so there's no variety at my house. <laughs> but keep shopping. Now, I'll look at the trolley at the top. I've got 12 items, $29. Not up to $50 yet, but that's all right. Uh, I want more um, want more specials, but I, I want to get out of the bakery. Uh, and I want to go to go to the deli. I will get some ham, so I can get some pride in there. Uh, and I do like uh, typically champagne leg ham uh, with some special or the... Uh, of Virginian, I don't like that as well. So I'll get some of that because that's on special. Like I always look for the yellow tickets <laughs> when I'm buying, uh, and this is what I'll get. Uh, now, just be aware, these aren't per kilogram prices that they show. They've got to bundle up to a typical uh, person that's shopping for themselves would only get, say, 125 grams of this particular week. So that's what they're saving, showing here. Uh, so uh, it's eight times that is a per kilogram price. In fact, they show that's 20. 20 kilograms, uh, twenty dollars per kilogram, uh, but it's actually, it's actually uh, saving a dollar or two dollars a kilogram. That's a good deal. I'll get some of that. But I, I want to get. Uh, I normally, oh, again, you can know me. I always, I'm a creature of habit. I buy 500 grams of ham every time, <laughs> so I'll get my 500 grams uh, of that. In fact, I'm going to get some of those Cheerios as well. Uh, because, yeah, we've got uh, 20 people coming over and so on the kids and those kids like that. And I'll get a stack of them. And what are 30, 50 grams? Jeez, that's not much. <laughs> give, me, give me plenty more than that. Yeah, I say, I'll, I'll get 10. That's a, what, what I've done there is I've, I've got a lot. I'm saying 70. No, I'm going to get more because I want to get it. Give me a lot. I want to get over $50 just for the uh, example I'm showing you. So I'll, I'll get uh, 20 times that. Sorry, most can order is 12. Okay, well, there you go. I guess that's because they don't want everyone hogging all the toilet paper. But you see what you mean? Those type of messages, they help you they come up. So that's right. I'll change my order uh, to 12. And they've done it for me. Now, I'm not quite there, so I'll get... Uh, oh, look, salmon, this will be for me uh, for dinner later on. Uh, in fact, I'll get, I'll get uh, two of them. So I just drop down list, click two, uh, and I've made $50. I've got 27 items in the trolley, uh, and I'm ready to go. Does that, does that make sense? I'm going to go back to the start. Let's go home or Coles. I'll go right back to the start of the website. Uh, you'll be able to see the specials. Or what's really good, too, is what you bought before. In other words, see, I bought something last week that was really nice. What was it again? Or what what flavour bread did I get? You know, was it was it with whole meals or was it with seeds? I can't remember. This will tell you. It, it tells you what you bought before and your previous orders. So, for me, that helps me remember as well. So, we've got our order. We want to get delivery next Thursday because it's a week away. Easily be able to get the time. Click on that and we can check out. You can go through and check your trolley. Uh, you can make sure you're happy, you can change at the drop down list if you want to get rid of things or change it, drop down list, you can change it or see there, remove the item entirely, you can do that. That's, that's totally up to you. Uh, but again, just like a real, at the checkout, uh, you, you can do that. Although one of those advantages, if you remember I said, is you don't have the pressure in selling. Sometimes if you get the checkout, you get a line up behind you and you go, oh, gee, oh no, I better buy that, I can't leave it behind now, it's embarrassing, everyone's looking. So you buy it and you didn't really want it because you got too many of it or whatever, or you changed your mind, or whatever. Here, get rid of it. 
there's, there's no pressure to buy. Uh, it's only you and the computer. Anyway, I'm happy with what I've got. Uh, they even tell me what savings I'm making because Coles want to make sure you're happy. And proceed to check out. Now this is where you're going to be entering uh, your delivery address uh, and uh, delivery time. This is where you, know, you obviously choose your address at the village uh, and, you, and you choose uh, the time on a Thursday uh, that, that's available. Uh, and if you, like I say, if you wait till just the day before, Thursday may be booked out. Uh, so certainly get in uh, well in advance if you can. Now, I won't go through to actually buying this because I don't want two dozen eggs and 20 wraps and whatever else I've got. Uh, but you'll be able to see uh, what, uh, you know, I mean, you enter your credit card details or you enter your PayPal details if, if you've uh, set up a PayPal account. Uh, and that's it. Then the goods will be delivered at the time frame you want. Now, you won't be able to select an exact time frame. It'll be a time segment, maybe a four hour window or you know, something like that. Uh, so pick a time that you will be there, especially if there's food that might go off in the sun. Uh, because one day, if we get back to normal, it'll be going back to delivery on your bench. So you don't even need to bend over and pick stuff up. At the moment, I understand it is delivered to your door simply for health reasons. So just be aware, you don't want things left at the door if it's going to be in the sun. So, so try to make a time that you will be there or at least someone will be there and, and is aware. And if something goes wrong and you're not there, something unexpected for whatever reason, you've got to go to the doctor or whatever, yes, they'll sort it out. They could, you can arrange for deliveries somewhere else or they can hold it till next week or whatever. Just that help down the bottom. They're more than happy to help. In fact, I had uh, on, a, on a previous session, someone said, oh, the first time I tried to order Coles, I wasn't getting the free delivery on a Thursday because they just hadn't entered the, um, the, uh, uh, the, the code from Stockland uh, correctly. But that's right, Coles were able to help them. You just click on there and get the contact details and they're more than happy to help. In fact, all good retailers, because they've got those contact numbers, they are happy to help because it'll make buying easier. It's the dodgy ones or the sus ones that don't have that help, <laughs> that don't provide help. Again, just be aware where you're shopping, but certainly Coles, as an example, or Woolworths, they all provide the same thing. Uh, effectively, they're, they're there to help. So don't be afraid to reach out. In fact, I should mention one of the reasons why you just look at Coles uh, as an example today is because at Stockton Centres, it is the most popular, of Stockton Villages, it is the most popular because uh, it is uh, registered, have done a deal with Stockton to give you a good deal. Uh, so that through the Benefits Plus program, yes, you do get that uh, Thursday delivery for free. But if you actually want to buy uh, vouchers from them, you, you actually get a 4% discount. In other words, you buy a $100 voucher uh, to buy groceries at Coles. Uh, it only costs you $96, uh, which, you know, that's a, that's a coffee every single time. It's a $4 every time, uh, which... By the way, those vouchers, gift cards, can only be used in person. They can't be used online shopping. But that's an example of a Benefits Plus program from, from, from Stockland. Anyway, look, that's all I was intending to show you live, but I'll just go back for a recap on, the, on those slides. As you know, that's where you register and effectively that's where you sign in as well. So what we went through today uh, was there's a lot more online shopping, especially since COVID. Uh, and so because there's a lot more shopping that's driven by demand, a lot of sites have also improved their systems, processes, made it more user-friendly for you. Uh, and their security is better as well. We've, we've seen a lot of that. Online shopping can be convenient, easy, and COVID safe. And some tips includes use your credit card. That is the safest way, uh, but be careful who you buy from. You don't hand over your credit card to some shady guy in the back streets of Shanghai or Moscow or wherever you have to be. Uh, same thing if you're, if you're in your home at, uh, at, at uh, Stockton Village. Just be aware where you're shopping. And to get started, uh, you know, get your computer, your device, keep them all up to date. Uh, register your account. But when you're registering, have everything written down in advance. Your name, email address, a date, because it could be use a date, uh, password, and mobile number. They're the common things that all, all sites require. And a delivery address 
uh, you know, have that all written down that way. But you know it, but it just it removes a little bit of stress that you might have when, when you're shopping. Look, what I'll quickly show you is just, just for a moment, is that uh, Benefits Plus program from the federal government. Like I say, this is free it's from the federal government. I think it's under-publicised. I think it's a fantastic service that the federal government give uh, to help people like us who are over 55 to be using technology confidently. So therefore, it's fun. And it's not just online shopping. It's how to use videos and uh, podcasts and just how, you know, what's the difference between a tablet and a laptop. Uh, yeah, different, yeah, so then the language you can start to become familiar with as well. Uh, it's really age appropriate the way they do it. Uh, so uh, down the bottom right down here, you can see the, please write down this address, uh, this website address. It's beconnected.esafety.gov.au. The .gov.au means it's Australian government. Uh, and you'll need to enter that address up there. Uh, in fact, when you click on that address up the top left hand corner, well, it's pretty small on the screen, but you may see it. there's a little padlock there. And uh, if you click on that address, that HTTPS comes up. So then you know this is a, a secure encrypted site with that uh, safety certificate applied to it. And when you go to Big Connect for the first time, uh, you will, just like on Coles, look for the sign in, sign up button, and a tipping over to the right somewhere. Click on that. Can you see that? Yes, <laughs> that one. <laughs> Click on that, uh, and then, then then you'll need to enter the key information because it'll bring you to this page. Now, if you've already signed up, all you need to do is put in your email address and password, and you're good to go. But if you've never signed up before for this particular website from the federal government, start over on the right-hand side, scroll down and find the Create New Account. Click on that. That is absolutely the first thing you need to do is create a new account. That's where you need your name, mobile number, and the uh, and a password. And if uh, if, if uh, you're because you're a Stockton Village, see if you can find you enter your Stockton Village in there because that connects you to the Stockton Village, and that will actually help Stockton get government grants from from the Be Connected program uh, to actually get IT for retirees, get me out to out to give you some classes, give you some training. The federal government actually pay for that. You can get a personalized one, but the federal government will actually pay for classes uh, through that, through the Be Connect program. But it certainly helps your village if you connect, if you identify yourself as being from a particular village. So create a new account with those details. And secondly, from then on, you log in. And that's all you gotta do. So with time's up, uh, gee, that went fast. Uh, but just as a reminder, if you've got any questions from the day or you want a recording of the day or you want a copy of the PDF or there's people that couldn't attend and you want you know, the recording for them to look at, please email Christine. That's her email address, chris at it4retirees.com.au. She can send you the uh, recording or a PDF of this presentation or find it, write down that phone number. She wants the calls. Uh, she thrives on getting calls from you all the time. Uh, so 0401 017459, give her a call if you want questions about today or questions about anything about IT, we're happy to help. Uh, and in fact, uh, we've got some more webinars coming up uh, with Stockton. So I think this afternoon, uh, we, we oh, just, just after me, I think, I'm not presenting it, uh, but a colleague is about movies and TV streaming. That's this afternoon and tomorrow. Uh, another one, someone else from IT for retirees is delivering one on podcasts. So attend all the Stockland uh, webinars this week. They're, they're free, they're all covered, again, supported by the federal government uh, and, and, and Stockland. Uh, but any questions, any personalised training, anything like that for your TV, phone, tablet, laptop, computer, let us know. They're all computers. Uh, and we know what it's like. <laughs> it can be hard. It can be confusing. So please let us know. Uh, and uh, and like you got my email from the start. If you have any questions, email me. But other than that, I'll stay online for another minute just to keep an eye on any questions. But if I don't answer them now, then we'll, Christine will certainly follow up uh, to get that to, to you as well. But other than that, thank you for attending. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and, and thank you uh, for, for your questions. That, that, was, uh, that was much appreciated. So thank you and hopefully I'll see you soon.